who could that? Oh, hi, it's you. Oh, what are you doing here? What's that? I haven't made a video in a while? Well, I guess I'll stop pooping and get on it right now. Jesus, you guys are so impatient. Let's go! Hey, what up everyone? It's Matt Mama. I'm back. Let's just get right into the freaking video, okay? So, everyone's been stuck in their houses, bored as frick because of the COVID. And what are what are we left to do but just rank everything on social media and fight with each other? And this is especially... <clears throat> And this is a, this has especially holy frick, Matt. And this has especially been happening in the world of sports. Everyone's been ranking players for every position, sport, anything you can think of. They're freaking ranking them. And I think it honestly is a great way, and it's fun to talk about the game you're passionate about and show some respect to the players that are all-time greats in the sports that you love. In reality, these rankings just end up being a bunch of people bickering on social media about why their objective list of athletes is better than everyone else's. So before we get into my rankings for this video, I, I, I just got to do a little rant on why I hate rankings and why people fight over them so much on social media. So let me just get that out of the way and to, to kind of counteract the craziness of my rant, I'm going to I'm going to put it over some calm, soothing video footage of me making some eggs. All right, strap in. <clears throat> Disagreeing with someone's inclusions and exclusions of players is one thing, but when people try to flex their knowledge when in reality they're just reading off stats from that player's football reference or basketball reference page, it loses all the fun and you end up arguing in circles over a subject that is largely opinion-based. And let me just say, athlete rankings are all opinions and objective. Whether it's players from different eras or players from the same era, it's all objective. And I don't want to hear numbers never lie as you barf out a bunch of stats to prove why you're smarter than everyone else. Sure, numbers never lie, but the people who use those those numbers will manipulate them to fit whatever narrative they're trying to craft. There's so many stats out there for every sport. Every person differs what stats they put more weight into. And that's why these rankings are objective. Because everyone looks at these players and their stats with different eyes. There's some things that some may have taken into account that others may not. And don't get me wrong, these kinds of rankings can be fun to do with your friends. What irritates me is when random people on social media get into belittling anyone who disagrees with them. And then you got your TV personalities like Stephen A. Smith, Max Kellerman, Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp, Colin Howard, they're treating their rankings as if they're fact and the gospel and doing them non-stop and repeating themselves. I mean, how many more times do we have to hear Skip Bayless say the same points on why LeBron isn't better than Jordan or why Tom Brady isn't better than Aaron Rodgers? We get it. We know your freaking opinion, Skip. If he were to say them only a few times, not contradict himself with the points he makes and try to belittle other players to make the players he likes look better, I wouldn't have a problem with it. It never stops. If someone can give sound and logical reasons why they decided to put some players ahead of others, why is it a big deal. I hate when people act like they can't even comprehend the idea that someone thinks Jordan is better than LeBron, or Tom Brady is better than Aaron Rodgers, or vice versa. All those players are elite all-time greats of their game, so if that's what you think, friggin' cool! And when people see a list they disagree with and they pull the, oh, you're being so disrespectful to this player card, A, I doubt whatever professional athlete we're talking about even sees it, B, even if they see it, so what? I'm a short, fat, white film student that can't grow facial hair anywhere else other than my neck. I don't think they're gonna lose sleep over my freaking opinion. So let's just all stop acting like we're smarter than everyone else and have fun talking about the sports we love and the great players that are in them. And yes, this rant was partially made to try and get rid of the cancerous comments below this video as soon as I reveal my opinions in this this video. Hey, I made you some eggs. Would you like some? They're real good. You like it? Do it again. <laughs> Trash. Woo! Okay, we got that out of the way. So this is this video is just gonna be quick spitfire of my rankings. We got sports, we got entertainment, we got potpourri, baby. You don't know what the frick we're gonna be ranking in this video. I'm ranking everything. And feel free to post your own rankings for all the things we're gonna be talking about in this video down in the comments below after this video. And uh, I probably won't cyberbully you. I might. I don't freaking know. So let's just freaking get into them with the sports. All right, baby. Top five NBA players today. Not not all time. Today, right now. So I don't want to hear anybody in the comments. How the heck did Elgin Baylor not make your top five NBA players list? Th this is only today, all right? Elgin Baylor's not in the NBA no more, guys. Let's relax. Okay, so number five, I got Anthony Davis. Great shot blocker, great defensive player. Can spread the floor as a big man, shoot from anywhere. Just a great score. He he's just a great player, all right? I think I've made enough points as to why Anthony Davis might be a top five NBA player. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let's just move on. Number four, I got James Harden, all right? Probably the best scorer in the NBA today. 
Um, he can shoot. He does. It, it, it. There will be nothing that will deter James Harden from shooting. I don't care if a man has his entire family gunpoint saying, "If you shoot the freaking ball again, I will blow your freaking family's brains off." James Harden's gonna look at him and be like. I'm freaking shooting, and then he's going to still shoot the ball. Number three, I got Kawhi Leonard, another great two-way player, can play defense elite, is a great offensive score, uh, scorer, just a great facilitator. He garners a lot of attention. Kawhi Leonard's one of the best. I mean, two-time finals MVP. All right, Kawhi Leonard's a great guy. I'm rambling. You guys get it. Kawhi Leonard's a great player. Number two, I got the Greek freak, Giannis Antetokounmpo. All right, the guy is just a freaking menace. And the thing is, he could still be getting better. So he could be potentially number one even next year, or even after the COVID freaking break. You don't know. All right, and number one, obviously, I have LeBron James is still the number one player in the NBA. He's just more effective as Giannis Antetokounmpo. He garners more attention, and he's just an... You, you have him on your team, and you are an instant finals contender. I don't care if he was on the Lakers, the Heat, the Cavs, or if he joined the Wizards for some freaking reason. If LeBron's on your team, that's a freaking threatening team, and you got to go full go every time he's on the court. All right, so quick honorable mention for this list i'm not going to do an honorable mention for every top five but here we go i gotta say kevin durant coming off the injury not too sure how he's gonna react to the injury not too sure how he's gonna come back i'm sure he can come back and be still a great player but not too sure it's, it's a tough achilles injury right so if, if he's anywhere close to the kevin durant that he was before the injury he's probably going to be somewhere on this top five just don't know how he's going to come back from it so that's a little asterisk i'm rambling let's go on to the next list Top five all-time NBA players, all right? This is where potentially Elgin Baylor could be there. He's not, but, I mean, he could. He could, but he's not. All right, number five, I have Magic Johnson. This guy had his career sh cut short by the uh, the AIDS, or HIV, I guess. But um, dude was dominant. He won, what, five championships in how many years did he play? I I'll put it over here. But he, he could have played longer. He could have won more championships. The guy was just an insane passer of the ball could just so many great things came from magic johnson i watched the highlights of magic and i'm like jesus this guy is insane and even when he came back from his little hiv hiatus he came back he was still really good even though he was really up there he got a little chunkier got a little chunkier but he was still magic johnson making some great plays all right number four i got kareem abdul jabbar just the longevity of him the longevity of his dominance he has one of the most unblockable shots the freaking skyhook Right, he played with the Bucks. He played with the Lakers. He just he just won wherever he freaking went. He was a great player. He played forever. I mean, seriously, that dude was playing until he was eighty. Not really, but still, he was playing a long time. Just the longevity, just the consistency. That's gonna land you on this freaking list. Number three, I got LeBron James. Oh my God, I didn't put LeBron James as the number one all time NBA player. Here here come the LeBron fans. <laughs> I'm sorry. And this is no disrespect. He's the third, in my opinion, the third all-time best player to play the game of basketball. I'm sorry, is that an insult? No, it's not. And he's still playing, so he can come up the list the more he accomplishes. I mean, he's still accomplished a lot, and it's it's objective. You, if you put him number one, I'm not going to freaking argue with you. He's LeBron freaking James. He's one of the all-time greatest. If you put him number one, I'm not going to fight with you. This is just my list, all right? I'm just going to get this out of the way right now because everyone's going to hate me. Number two is Kobe Bryant. He's my all-time favorite NBA player. He's probably my all-time favorite athlete, probably my all-time favorite person. Sorry, Mom, but drop 81 points in a game before you're better than Kobe Bryant. I'm sorry. That's just how it goes. But I got Kobe Bryant, probably biased, but still. He is he was an all-time great scorer, just underrated defensive player in his time. Just a dominant player that you did not want to go against if you wanted needed to win a game, right? Number one, I got Michael Jordan. Alright. The last dance documentary is going on, so more people are gonna agree with this point than before the, the documentary. But Michael Jordan was just a freak of nature, a freaking guy that wanted nothing but to win and dominate in what he did. And that's what I see in Kobe Bryant. But Michael Jordan was the originator of it, and he was just way more threatening in his time in the NBA. More people feared him. It's like he owned the NBA in those two, in those one and a half years where he wasn't in the NBA. Everyone's like, "Oh frick! Finally, we can win!" You know, that's how freaking dominant he was. So I gotta, I gotta put Michael Jordan number one, and I'm sure. Can you guys understand why I have him number one? I mean, don't act like you don't. All right, baby, let's move into the NFL top five quarterbacks. Today, all right, this is today, not not all time, so Doug Flutie will not be on this list, so this is quarterbacks today. Number five, I got Drew Brees. Now, we're not talking about the players that are playing today in their prime, no, players today as they are today. 
All right, Drew Brees looked a little iffy when he when uh, at the end of the season, especially in that playoff game against Minnesota. So he's still number five. He's still one of the the, the best quarterbacks making smart decisions. I'd love to have Drew Brees on my team if I didn't already have Aaron Rodgers, who's who's higher on this list. Little spoiler alert. Number four, I got Tom Brady. All right, he's 42 freaking years old. I mean, if this was prime Tom Brady, he'd probably be number one. But easily, probably still the smartest quarterback in the NFL. Just doesn't have the best arm. Uh, Going to be interesting to see what he does with weapons like Mike Evans and Chris Godwin uh, this coming season. So I'm excited for that. But for right now, got him at number four. Very interested to see what he does in an, on a new team. Number three, I got my man Aaron Rodgers. I bet you guys thought I would put him number one. But no, I put him number three. I guess you can kind of say he's been declining, but still... One of the most effective quarterbacks. He's not going to give you turnovers. I guess he does pass the ball, throw it out of bounds a little too much. Doesn't take the easy passes. Always tries to get the extra yards with the extra difficult throw. But he's still number three. He's still Aaron freaking Rodgers. And Aaron, if you're watching this, hey, freaking let's hang out, dude. Let's play a game of Uno or something, you know? Number two, I got Russell Wilson. All right, this may shock some people. But first of all, I used to be not the biggest believer in Russell Wilson, but these past two seasons he's just proved me wrong carrying the Seahawks team on his back just making unbelievable plays the man is good and I just wish Russell Wilson would have a better offensive line maybe a consistent running game which he's had but injuries have caused that to go out of control some better weapons you know DK Metcalf was a nice addition but Russell Wilson's really freaking good and uh, that game against the freaking Packers in the playoffs that guy was just carrying that Seahawks team, keeping him in the game. So hats off to Russell Wilson, man. He is a heck of a player. But number one's Patty Mahomes. I mean, the dude has just freaking dominated the NFL since he's become a starter. I mean, winning MVP already, winning a Super Bowl. And this dude's only played less than two full years, right? So the freaking sky's the limit for Patrick Mahomes. going to be interesting how he bounces back after winning a Super Bowl. Everyone's coming for him. Going to be interesting to see, but I'm pretty sure he can handle it with all the weapons they have in Kansas City. So that's my list. All right, you Doug Flutie fans, hang on to your pants because now we're doing top five all-time quarterbacks, baby. So Doug Flutie could be on there. All right, number five for top five all-time quarterbacks is, ironically enough, Drew Brees again. So he was top five in today, and now I got him all-time. The dude has just been banging up stats since he's been in the freaking league. Now he's your all-time passing yards leader, touchdowns. Who, who knows what else Drew Brees is going to freaking do other than win regular season MVP, which he hasn't done, surprisingly enough. But uh, Drew Brees is just an all-time great quarterback. Had some pretty trash defenses uh, in New Orleans in the middle of his run there. But they got a solid team. I mean, their window's closing, but I still think Drew Brees has a chance of winning another Super Bowl. We'll see what he can do, but I got him number five. All right, number four for all-time quarterbacks, I have Aaron Rodgers. Um, my man. So you could argue talent-wise he's the greatest quarterback of all time. Even... Even not just talent-wise, but just production-wise. He's done he's done a lot of great things, right? But I have him number four. It's tough. He's still active. Him and Drew Brees are still active, so they could climb up the list, right? Um, but, but I feel confident giving him right there. Uh, multiple MVP awards, winning a Super Bowl. Hasn't gone back even to another Super Bowl since that 2010 one. Uh, would really like to see that as a Packers fan, but... Number four all-time great, and I freaking love you, Aaron Rodgers. And it was a toss-up of whether I was going to put Aaron Rodgers or Brett Favre in this list, but I decided to go with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, number three, I got Peyton Manning, my brother's favorite player. Uh, just another freaking beast uh, with the Colts and the Broncos coming back from that neck injury and going to two more Super Bowls, winning a Super Bowl, having that insane, what was it, 2013 MVP season. Peyton Manning has been is he's easily the greatest regular season quarterback of all time. Had some playoff struggles, but you know most quarterbacks have. And Peyton Manning's won two Super Bowls, so you got to give it to him. He's number three all time. Number two, look out, geezers! I just included Joe Montana as number two. The guy was a freaking dominant quarterback, uh, really revolutionary. Like you know, he had his man Jerry Rice, I guess. But the dude, the dude, freaking won games, won what five Super Bowls, which at the time was unheard of for a single quarterback until my number one quarterback came to town, which was Tom Brady. All right, I'm sorry if I I, I, I was kind of just making stuff up to talk about Joe Montana. Just looking at his accomplishments, I had to put Joe Montana on the list. But number one is Tom Brady. Freaking so many Super Bowl rings, I, I can't even count that high. You know, he's up there in all, all, the, all the stats all time, and he's still going with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Really interested to see what he can do with this team. And, you know, depending on how he does, you know, this, this may change a lot of people's opinions on Tom Brady if he fails or if he succeeds. So, 
really interested to see what Tom Brady does this year. Oh man, I've been talking for a while. I got I got to start going faster with these. All right, top five receivers today. Number five, we got Mike Evans. He's been a thousand yard receiver every year he's been in the league so far. One of the most underrated receivers in the league today. Number four, I got Julio Jones. The dude just, I feel like he gets 1,400 yards easily every year. The dude's a freaking monster. He's got insane hands. Still has it, even though he's what? He's like 10 years in the league now. So number four, Julio Jones is a beast. Number three, I got my man. I would say the most underrated receiver in the league today, Devontae Adams, one of the best route runners. Just the chemistry he has with Aaron Rodgers is insane. You know, you had Aaron Rodgers and Jordy Nelson. That connection seemed like, oh, man, once you lost that, it's like, how, how can you replace that? Then Devontae Adams just kept continuing to improve, and now him and Aaron have the same thing that Aaron and Jordy kind of had. Uh, number two, I got Michael Thomas. Just had an insane season this last year, and he's been really good, getting better each year, it seems like. Um, even when Drew Brees went down, Michael Thomas was freaking productive, so I can't even – Make the excuse of like, oh, he's got Drew Brees. That's why he's so good. But he was doing with Teddy Bridgewater, who's no scrub, but still, he's no Drew Brees. And the number one receiver I have in the NFL today is DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, I've been a big DeAndre Hopkins supporter uh, probably since 2014, 2015. I've been thinking he's been really underrated. But now he's recognized as one of the best, if not the best, receiver in the NFL today. And I'd still put him number one. Uh, Insane hands. Uh, And it seems like Houston's really never had a healthy receiver squad to kind of take some pressure off of Hopkins you know Will Fuller's always going down they had Kenny Stills I guess but they always have injury problems and DeAndre Hopkins is always there always consistent and he's a freaking beast oh I just rambled again we gotta we gotta pick this up Matt come on all right what's next uh freaking top five all-time receivers baby number five this is kind of an overlooked receiver but Marvin Harrison the dude every time uh when I when he was in the NFL you, you would look at the bottom of the screen where all the stats pop up Dude always had at least 100 yards and a touchdown every freaking week. Him and Peyton Manning were just on another freaking level, always dominant, just in sync, and they were doing it for such a long time at such a high level, right? So Marvin Harrison, number five, baby. Number four, I got Terrell Owens. You know, teammate-wise and able to grow chemistry with this receiver, not the strongest, but the dude was so freaking talented, so freaking dominant, so freaking fun and amazing to watch. T.O. had to be on this list. Um... Some may put him higher, some may put him way lower just for how just obnoxious he can be, I guess. But I, I got to put him in the top five. Number three, I got Larry Fitzgerald. Basically the polar opposite of what Terrell Owens is. You know, consistently a great teammate, always shows up every week. Just, he is a winner. That dude just wanted to win games and would do anything to win them. Like what he did to my Packers in that 2015 playoff game to end it. Ugh, oh, that breaks my heart. But I can't hate him because I love my man Larry Fitzgerald. Such a great player. Uh, Number two, I got Randy Moss. That is a disgusting act by Randy Moss. A lot of people put him number one, but uh, just dominant from when he was a rookie. His resurgence with the the Patriots was on another freaking level. Kind of a weird way to end his career, you know, where he played with the Vikings and Brett Favre for a little bit, and then he went to the Titans, and then he retired, came back, went to the the Niners. I don't don't know what Randy Moss was doing at the end of his career, but it seems like it, it kind of wasted, but... Randy Moss, such a dominant receiver, and obviously I would understand if you have him number one. But I have Jerry Rice number one. Uh, Such a dominant freaking receiver. Just unheard of at the time for how dominant he was in the league. Um, And his numbers, like, all time, it's going to be really tough to catch, even with today's NFL, pass-happy NFL, right? And my brother actually made a great point when I showed him this list was, imagine Jerry Rice in today's NFL where you can only hold the receiver in the first five yards and not all the way down the field, and with how pass interference is called, Jerry Rice would be a scary guy, right? So that's my top five all-time receivers. I'm going to end this clip uh, portion right now. All right, most of the serious sports stuff that I feel like I have to justify my opinions to are over with, and now we're just going to have a little bit of fun, do a little bit of spitfire. My top five personal go-to movies. I'm not going to say these are my top five all-time favorite movies, these are. This is kind of a desert island situation where I need to bring five movies to watch for the rest of my life. I can only watch five. These are the five I'm going to bring. All right, Jurassic Park. Steven freaking Spielberg, one of my favorite directors. Just the CGI holds up for how long the movie came out, how long ago, right? It still looks better than the Jurassic Park sequels and even the Jurassic World movies. It looks better. The suspense in that movie is amazing. The characters are so likable. All right, number four is Scream. I need a horror movie. I need, I'm need. i a huge slasher fan when it comes to horror. It was between Scream and Halloween. The pacing for a Halloween's a little slow for me. I just enjoy the humor, the characters, and even the scares in Scream is underrated. So I, I really like Scream. 
Uh, number three, we got another Spielberg movie, Jaws. Just a movie that you don't really think about as one of your favorites, but I just continually find myself wanting to go rewatch it. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm slowly starting to figure out that I, I like the characters in movies. So, Quint, you got Richard Dreyfuss's character, you got Brody, Chief Brody. I mean, I just, that scene where they're all on the boat, just drunk as frick, laughing about sharing their scars. It's it's one of my favorite scenes for no reason. Uh, number two, I need an action movie, baby, and I need, I need some Tom Cruise in my life. Mission Impossible Fallout. Um, just one of my favorite movie theater experiences because I watched all the Mission Impossibles leading up to it. And Mission Impossible not only didn't disappoint, but holy frick, the action, the, the, the practical, actually, he did this crazy stuff. It just blows my mind, and holy cow, what a great movie. Number one's The Dark Knight, one of my favorite movies. Really, the movie that got me into movies, got me into film, is a huge reason why I'm a film student right now, is The Dark Knight. Um... Just a movie that I've watched multiple times and I pick new things up every time I watch it. The performances are insane. Harvey Dent, uh, Aaron Eckhart, underrated performance. Michael Caine as Alfred. Obviously Heath Ledger as the Joker. Christian Bale gives his solid uh, mouth cancer interpretation as Batman. Alright, let's move on to top five personal go-to TV shows, baby. So this is, again, a Desert Island kind of situation, right? You're going to need a little bit of everything if you're going to watch this, right? So this isn't necessarily my fav top five favorite TV shows. Number five is uh, Netflix Daredevil series. The three seasons that we got are freaking insane. Uh, season one with Wilson Fisk. Season two with The Punisher and Elektra. Um, and season three, just the... Oh my god, the action in, in these. Uh, Wilson Fisk is a great villain. The Punisher is a really fun character to watch. Even Elektra is fun to watch. Number four, I need some trash reality TV in my life. And it was either, it's a toss-up between Gordon Ramsay shows, but in the end I ended up not going with the Gordon Ramsay show, even though I love that man yelling at people. I went with uh, CBS Big Brother, baby. It's just got everything I love in a cheesy reality show. You got the competition aspect. You got the fighting happening between people. You got people locked up going crazy. It's just fun time to watch people miss their families and cry about it and then fight with people over dumb things like, who ate the last freaking peanut butter sandwich i'm oh my god i freaking love big brother if you like trash reality tv big brother is the way to go baby uh number three i need some cartoons i need some animated stuff in my life and the first three seasons of spongebob is what i'm taking you can keep all the trash seasons of spongebob i'll take the first three seasons um and that's all i need because I i'm a grown man and i will still laugh my freaking butt off at spongebob the first three seasons are just brilliant rest in peace Stephen hillenberg you are a genius Number two, I'm going to kind of cheat here, and I'm going to put Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul as one. Because, you know, it's it's the same story. Even though they're two technically two different shows, Better Call Saul is a prequel of Breaking Bad. But, oh my god, don't even get me started on Breaking Bad. I could do a whole 20-minute thing rambling about how much I love these shows. And number one, I need a comedy. It's a toss-up between Parks and Rec and The Office. In the end, I'm going to go with The Office. Um, Steve Carell as Michael Scott is probably one of my favorite characters Easily the funniest character on TV ever. Uh, love The Office. Su such a funny show. I can rewatch an episode countless times and still freaking laugh at just the littlest little details. Uh, what else we got? Top five candies. I'm fat as frick. Let's count down some candies. Number five, Twix. I hate the left Twix, right Twix little promotion that they're doing. That's freaking stupid. I get it. I get the joke of left Twix, right Twix, but they're the same Twix. I get it. Stop making commercials about it. If you made, like, two commercials about it, it would have been fine. But you keep going with it, and that's why you're number five. You would be higher, Twix, but you keep doing with this stupid promotion. <sighs> All right, let's relax, Matt. Number four, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, baby. A go-to. The number one Halloween candy by far, but... Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, just the the, the the peanut butter, the chocolate, the oh mama, let me get that in my mouth. I, I don't know how to commentate on candy, so this is what we're going with. Number three, Milk Duds, baby, the, the go-to movie theater candy. Um, I, I love me some caramel, I love me some Milk Duds, I apparently love me some chocolate and caramel in between my teeth, and you know what, Milk Duds are a good time. Number two, underrated candy right now, folks. The Root Beer Barrels candy is freaking insanely good, and they're addictive, and oh my god. Like, I, j I found myself ordering them by the pound online during this coronavirus because I needed some candy, so I've been ordering that. I, I ordered a five-pound bag of Root Beer Barrels candy, and they're freaking good, all right? I, oh god, all the respect I had with anyone is gone now. Number one is Reese's Sticks. 
All right? It's better than Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, and it's also different than Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I don't want to freaking hear it. They're different candies, and it's the best. All right? Holy frick, I'm out of breath. Let's just keep going. I'm not stopping. I'm not. I'm not. We're going to keep going. Top five musical artists. Number five, four, three, and two are blank. Number one is Michael Jackson. I'm a guy that obsesses over a few things, and I freaking love them. And I, I, I don't like anything else other than Michael Jackson. But I guess just for the purpose of this video, I, I'll, I'll try and think of something. Um, okay, I think I have this figured out. All right, here's my top five musical artists. Number five is the lady who sang the Duck song. Um, just really spoke to me. Number four is the Baja Men. Who let the dogs out? <sighs> the lyrics. I mean, you, you, if you listen to the lyrics, I mean, it's just... I don't know. Number three is Lou Bega. Mambo number five. Oh my god, what a... My nips are hard just thinking about that song. Number two is the Backstreet Boys. I mean, I got... It. I I want it that way. Everybody, those two songs, I could live on alone for the Backstreet Boys. And if you think NSYNC's better than the Backstreet Boys, then go ahead and uh, hit that unsubscribe button. You're freaking irrelevant to me. Number one, still Michael Jackson. All right? I'm sorry, I have trash taste in music, but what what did you expect? What is the number one most viewed video on my channel? It's this! I got the weapons in the back, ready to attack. Can we not take me so seriously with music? Okay, guys, uh, that's it. I'm, I'm out of opinions. I am exhausted from talking about my opinions, but... Feel free to leave uh, your, 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 your rankings in the comments below for these hard-hitting topics that we've discussed. And I better not see anyone fighting with other people's opinions in the comments below. Alright? Because I will call your parents, and if you don't have parents, you're not off the hook. I will then laugh at you for being an orphan. Oh, I'm the jerk now because I'm laughing at the orphan? He's the one that was being mean to people in the comments. And what are the odds that there is an orphan watching my video that is also being mean to people in the comments? Stop getting mad at me for this hypothetical situation. <laughs> you guys aren't even ready for this. I'm Matt Mamba. I know how to close videos. Oh, I know how to close videos now? Because I got a freaking wheel! That's right. Have you ever seen a YouTuber freaking end their videos spinning a wheel before? Okay, whatever. We're just spinning it, baby. This is how we end in this video. Show a TikTok. This is where I'm going to show you guys one of my cringy TikToks I've made. Yeah, I'm on TikTok now. Freaking follow me. Or don't. I don't know. Okay, let's do this. Wait. Okay. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good.